Welcome to Word of Mouth, the talking newsletter focused on putting buzz into the small to mid-sized business. Business people today are tossing and turning at night as they are haunted thinking of ways to increase revenues. Many small businesses are turning to putting more emphasis on networking and are attending area networking groups. The process, however, can be arduous as well as costly in time and money as attendees many times find the events scarcely filled with good prospects. Today we are talking with Alexander Eidenberg, President at the Insurance People, a life, health, and property casualty insurance practice dedicated to educating its clients about the current market and the changing environment. Additionally, Alexandra is the Executive Managing Director of eWomen Network Chicagoland, where she helps women and men create relationships that will allow them to achieve their ultimate business goals. Welcome, Alexandra, to Word of Mouth. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be chatting with you, Richard. Alexandra, what is your sense of networking today? Quite often I hear from people and organizations that they're not happy with their networking. And really the bottom line is it's about the time and the people that are there. So if you're going to night networking and wondering why everyone's drunk and single, it's no shock. It's an evening event that where there's liquor served. If you're trying to reach a business bottom line and meet people that are going to help you grow your business, you need to go to events where those people are. So if you know your target market is middle-aged women, then you're going to need to join an organization that has middle-aged women in attendance. And if middle-aged women are hanging out in the morning, then you want to go to the morning events. And I think that in general, when you're looking at doing networking to grow your business, you got to think time and place and who's there and what time do those people normally hang out that are my target market. And once you evaluate that, you can really make some educated decisions on the organizations and events to attend. Alexandra, we are familiar with the traditional places to network, such as chambers or formal networking groups. But can you recommend some non-traditional places to network? There's many different kinds of networking, and a type of networking that I really like to focus on is community networking, and you can do that in several different ways. I happen to work with an organization that takes young women out of impoverished communities and teaches them entrepreneurship. This organization allows me to be a part of several things that I care about, as well as surround myself by my target market almost on accident. And by being a part of the community, I'm automatically creating credibility for myself and allowing myself to be in front of my target market through giving back. So joining up with a local organization so you can be a part of the community, give back, and get clients all at the same time is a fantastic way to accomplish that. Other ways you can do that are simply as sponsoring a local baseball team or coaching your kid's soccer team. When you're involved in something that's so basic and so family-ish, it allows people to see you not only in the business light, but in a personal light. And ultimately, to get to your bottom line of gaining new clients, people need to know, like, and trust you. And by doing things within your community, people are going to get there even faster and want to work with you. I recently coached an AYSO soccer team, which is a national organization for youth soccer. And in coaching that soccer team, about half the parents ended up being my clients. And that wasn't intentional. What was intentional was being a part of the community and giving back to those that are part of my everyday life. And I ended up getting in, you know, the the getting seat, which so rarely happens uh, when you're thinking about helping your community. But in actuality, it does really happen because when you give back to those around you, good things come your way. And that's the giver's gain philosophy. Community networking sounds like a networking gem, especially if you sell to consumers. But what if you sell B2B? I think when you're selling B2B, and I do that in my own business as well, it's about aligning yourself with organizations. For example, the American Heart Association or, you know, the Women's Organization of Entrepreneurs, whatever that might be, when you align your business with an organization that focuses on helping diabetics or those with cancer, you're going to immediately attract a crowd that has the same mission. So if you want to become a part of an organization that helps the community recycle, you're going to surround yourself with people that are part of the green movement. And there's a lot of business owners involved with that. And ultimately, you're going to get back to your bottom line through surrounding yourself with like people and focusing on a common mission. It could be anything from an organization that supports people with a certain disease or a mission like the eco-friendly green movement 
And in doing so, you definitely want to pick something that you are in line with. If you're not eco-friendly, don't go and join a green alliance of some sort. Focus on things that already matter to you and your family and your colleagues, and that way you'll be able to authentically make a place for yourself within that organization. Thank you, Alexandra, for your fresh ideas on making networking pay off big. Fantastic. It was so great to be here, and I really appreciate your time and joining you today, Richard. This is fantastic. To continue the conversation with Alexander Eidenberg about networking, contact her via the information on your screen. And thank you for clicking on Word of Mouth. This is Rich Steelman. Word of Mouth is a courtesy production of eMotion Marketing, the answer to why you.